Um, you know, you mentioned you mentioned a couple of key names, and I want to ask you, uh, Uncle Paulie, head of security, Roger Barnes. Um, yeah. Did, did you know? Did you know Gene Deal at the time? Was he even up there when y'all was there? I I, I watch a lot of Gene because you know I've, since you know everything. It's been just crazy energy. I just been watching shit, old shit, old videos, old shit. So I mean, I speak, see Gene speaks on a lot of things. He speaks on a time where he was there when Biggie was there, and then I think around a time where I guess actually we did the show is when he kind of made his separation because then he speaks as if he was there right after, which was Danny Lee Kane's installment of making a band. So I don't know if he skipped when we was doing the whole show. We was isolated so much that we wasn't around pup enough when we seen Jill. But I, I have no memories of seeing Jill, me, seeing Gene. Maybe I did. He just didn't give me that, you know what I mean, that standout personality or maybe, you know what I mean? But I, I didn't really see Gene too much at, at all. I, mean, I don't I think he was there. I don't, I don't think he was there Gene. at that time. But I heard him mention y'all name. I've seen a recent interview where he speaks, you know what I mean, about you know, you know, certain things. And he bring my name up a couple of times as far as like, you know, Puff kept me around to do certain, certain writing, certain writing um things for him and shit like that. And, you know, he does say later on in the interview that the only one Puff kind of had time for was Ness because Ness had, you know, was writing shit for him. And, you know, you know, and they would try to, you know, that's what Puff do. He had try to get niggas to write for him and take their publishing. But this is another disclaimer. Puff never owned none of my publishing. He never owned it because I was signed through a production deal. So whatever um, um, agreement I had with my production deal for my publishing, that was the agreement. Puff didn't have no 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 papers on my 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 publishing the whole time. So when Puff recently gave back the publishing to all of his artists, it ain't like he right. owned your publishing to begin with. So it wasn't like no. he could even return it. No, no, he could never return it. Puff. Gave me a lot of things that artists such as myself don't win up front. He let me retain my merchandising. He let me retain my publishing. He let me retain a lot of things. And in his defense, and I'm nobody's lawyer, he gave me a lot of things up front that he's not supposed to give me. So so meaning if I would have came out with an album, I really would have won up front instead of the company that I was signed to because I was signed to my own production deal. So... Puff didn't have nothing invested in my project as of he just signed me, gave me a budget and told me to do my thing. He didn't have no investment in the publishing. He didn't have no investment in the merchandising. So if I would have came up with my album, just like it was a partnership. It was like, yo, we I, we take our bread. Y'all take our your bread. In all the years that you've been signed, have you ever seen a royalty check? Yeah, I've seen like one or two. In all the years you've been signed? Uh, I mean, I want to tell people for real, for real. Getting back in money on, in the music business is like almost second to none. I mean, you really have to fight for your money. And I just want to tell people it's not a common thing. They just don't have, they just don't sign, make these checks and just hand them over to you. You have to really do a lot of digging. And you really have to do a fight for your money. Not only, I'm not talking specifically about the situation I am talking about any company. Interscope, Rock Nation, anything, fucking Universal, Def Jam, like, it's designed for you to hunt down your money. It's not designed for you to just pop up at the label and they give you checks. And that goes for any fucking label. Nah, I don't think people really realize that. Um, it is not common in the music industry to see them royalty checks. More times than not, an artist is going to make their money on the road. It's just that simple. Shows is what buys them the big house. Shows is what keeps them and their family eating. But if you sitting there waiting on a royalty check, you're going to be waiting for a long time. So it don't surprise me that you, in 20 years, didn't see but two royalty checks. And speaking of that, was them royalty checks big? That's what. That's how many, that's how many royalty checks I've seen. And I also got bamboozled by my lawyer because I gave them a power attorney at the time. Who was your so lawyer? I had all my checks forwarded to um, my lawyer, which was in New York. So all my money was going to, to keep it. I mean, track of everything I had, I mean, gave my lawyer a power attorney. So all my, all my 
fucking royalty checks would go straight to my lawyer. And he ended up not, you know what I mean, reporting a couple checks to me that I found out years after the statute of limitation is over. And I, and I actually had a personal conversation with him and all roads was leading to him stealing my money. So even I, I want to make this disclaimer, even your personal lawyer and managers, you have to, you know what I mean, watch them closely also because they're making a quick buck too. Power of attorney is what it is. It's power of attorney. Meaning if you forward all checks and all, you know I mean, traffic as, as far as um, economically and financially towards your lawyer, they can abuse that privilege also. And that also happened to me. Who who was your lawyer at the time? Was it still? Did you you mentioned the name up front in the interview? Ed Woods. Ed Woods wasn't my wasn't my lawyer no longer after that. Um, I think Ed Woods had passed after that. I had a lawyer named by the name of Corey Body. Okay, but you're speaking about York. Ed. Yeah, Ed was Black Keys manager. My he was my lawyer by default because I was signed to Black Keys production deal and. Ed Woods was his lawyer at the time, his entertainment lawyer, which structured the deal. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.